You know, uh, since the beginning of this pandemic, we've been focused on nursing homes, the vulnerable population there. And, and as you know, uh, almost 40% of the deaths that we've had in the United States are people in nursing homes. And we were uh, approached with an idea really from NIH and National Institute of Health and, and their collaborators to see whether we could try a prevention trial in nursing homes. So we, we went into the, the nursing homes and assisted living facilities, offered residents and staff a, an opportunity to participate in research where we randomized them to get uh, this neutralizing antibody ban, lenivimab or placebo. And then we followed for eight weeks uh, to see what happened. And what we found was among people who got the drugs, statistically significantly less um, infection with COVID-19 and less symptomatic disease. It, it was most pronounced in nursing home residents, where in the, the actual residents, we had an 80% reduction in the, in the risk uh, in a given facility of, of getting symptomatic disease. That's hugely meaningful. And uh, uh, we also saw um, fewer deaths. Uh, so we, we think even in this study, we were able to save lives, uh, which is uh, incredibly uh, um, heartwarming in, in this population. So uh, the, the next question that you raise is, is if this is authorized by the FDA, and, and that's certainly the next step to discuss with them, um, how do we make sure this, this is available uh, to residents at nursing home? What we envision is uh, really a, a rapid response in these facilities where this is not a replacement for vaccination. It's not a, a choice. Uh, it's for people who haven't been vaccinated where there is an outbreak happening uh, and there's other residents or staff that are infected. Um, and now this could uh, potentially offer uh, an immediate response uh, to that outgoing out outbreak. And then hopefully uh, over time, the, the residents all, all will get vaccinated. What is your take on the new administration's um, embrace of antibody drugs um, as a solution for COVID-19? You know, we heard from the new CDC director, Dr. Rochelle Walensky, earlier this week saying they're not a panacea for outpatient treatment because they're just too hard. You know, some people who are connected or who can figure out how to do it can get access to these now as a treatment early in the course of COVID if they're at high risk. But everybody, you know, not everybody who could be eligible is, is able to get them. Is, do you think there's support from the Biden administration to facilitating more access to antibody drugs? Sure. Yeah, I'm confident that the new administration will, will do everything in their power to bring all vaccines and treatments to as many patients as, as possible. Uh, I think one of the uh, obstacles here, you know, is, is that it is relatively complicated to administer an infusion, although we were able to do it, as you pointed out, with a, with a small group of people who, who turned up in a van and, and, and were able to set this up. Um, but when you combine that with skepticism from physicians who still say, some physicians might still say, is there enough data or not, uh, that makes it really hard. I, I think over the last uh, a few months, we've seen more and more data about the power of neutralizing antibodies. This is a large study. It involved more than 1,000 uh, participants, uh, phase three trials statistically significant. I, I think that will add to the body of evidence and the surety that, that we have that these antibodies are an important tool. With that, I think doctors and hospitals will, will go that extra mile to, to make sure they can administer it to as many uh, people as, as possible. Accordingly, over the last mm. uh, few weeks, especially, we've seen utilization of these monoclonal antibodies for treatment uh, in the outpatient setting uh, really uh, increasing quite dramatically. We, we get calls every day from uh, people and, and facilities telling us about the, the results that they're getting. Well, Dan, we just got just about a minute left, and I'm sorry to ask you a complicated question with not very much time, sure. but these variants, you know, where everybody's worried about them. We, we talked to Dave Ricks, your CEO, who mentioned that the variant associated with South Africa uh, may be of concern to how well bamlinivimab, your antibody, works. Are you looking at that? Are you working on developing new antibodies in case that's a problem? Yeah, they, no, that's a, it's a really important question, Meg. Ba based on all of the surveillance that we have right here in the United States right now, Bamlinivimab is effective against 99.9% .9 plus uh, of the strains that are circulating. And the remainder of, of less than a percent are hit by our combination therapy, which is under review uh, at the FDA for emergency use authorization. So uh, I think we're good right now. Um, but the threat uh, is looming, and, and that is variants such as the South Africa variant, which just have so many mutations in the spike protein they threaten the, the efficacy of, of all of the, the monoclonal antibodies, even uh, antibodies that people make in response to infection with the original strain uh, may not be uh, effective against this, this variant. So we are working. We have antibodies in our labs. 
um, that, that will neutralize the South African variant. We're ready to move those forward uh, and we're watching if this really catches on and, and comes uh, um, becomes a, a global threat, uh, of course, uh, we'll respond quickly with, with new antibodies. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.